a este seminario extraordinario en el Departamento de Ciencia de Materiales que va a dar el profesor Manfred Bollmann de la Universidad de Clausthal y en el que nos va a hablar de las eh, facilidades, digamos, de las posibilidades que tienen en la Universidad de Clausthal para distintos estudios y luego también las líneas de investigación que ellos siguen en su instituto. El profesor Manfred Bollmann es, eh, como lo podemos ver aquí, es, eh, tiene un titula, una titulación en eh, tecnología de corrosión en cristalografía y también es doctor en ciencias naturales por la Universidad de Claustal. Ha tenido una experiencia amplia en la industria y también en la universidad en distintas líneas de investigación, la mayoría de ellas relacionadas con la corrosión y la corrosión bajo tensión. Entonces, él ahora nos va a hablar eh, sobre todo de lo que es su universidad y las líneas de investigación que tienen y bueno, pues espero que sea de, espero de, que sea de su agrado. Y nada más. Entonces, now you are all set. So, thank you very much for coming to, to Madrid, to our department. It's a real pleasure to have you here. And it's a real pleasure to, to know more about your institute and, yes. your, and your university. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Jesus, for the introduction. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to, to present you some details related to my university, but at first I must confess that this presentation is not my presentation. It's a presentation of Susanne Romanowski. She is the director of the International Center in Clausthal. Therefore, I'm not very familiar with this presentation, but I'm trying to do my best. Let's start. This is our own university, not the complete university. This is the main building, but I think it's not the most important building of the university. On the right side, a more traditional building in this university. Klostal is located in northern Germany near Hanover. I don't know whether you know Hanover. I'm convinced you know Hamburg. It's not so far from Hamburg. Göttingen is another city in the near of Klausthal, Braunschweig, and so on. The history of our university is indeed a very tradi traditional school. It was founded in 1775 as Klausthaler Montanische Lehrstätte. It's very difficult to translate it. It's ancient, very ancient German, therefore I want to do it. 1864, Königliche Bergakademie, the Royal Academy of Mining. After that, significant expansion of study prog programs during the 60s and <coughs> from 68, Technische Universität Klostern. Since 2009, a member of the NTH. Lately, lately, I will talk more about the NTH. <coughs> yeah, this is the location. I explained it before. This is Klaustal in the Harz Mountains. And this is the largest church made of wood in Eu Europe. I think so. I'm not convinced of it, but I read it. Not all the houses in Klaustal are colored like this one, but it gives you a good impression about this small village. <coughs> Some remarks to the statistics. The data are from 2011. Not so actual. Today I think we have 4,000 full-time students and a lot of international students, more than 1,000, and nearly 30% female students. 400 PhD candidates, this is a German doctoral degree, and 90 professors and 420 scientific staff. The <coughs> Natural and material science, energy and man management, 
and mathematics and computer science, mechanical engineering, all these topics can be studied in class time. You will see it later completely. <coughs> Our bachelor programs, applied mathematics, business administration, chemistry, energy and natural resources, the energy technology, geo, environmental engineering, computer science, mechanical engineering, material science, technical computer science, process engineering and chemical engineering. Business informa informatics is new in cluster, that's very interesting, and industrial engineering, additional or master's program. In the past, we had only diploma programs, but now we've changed the system, such as in Spain. It's the same transition to other programs, and therefore, you now we have the master programs. There we have applied mathematics, automation engineering, <coughs> chemistry, power systems engineering, energy and raw materials, supply engineering, engineer science, geo-environmental engineering, computer science, mechanical engineering, material science, mechatronics, operation research, petroleum engineering, physical engineering, radioactive and <coughs> waste management, raw materials and geoscience, material supply engineering, technical business administration, recycling, and environmental engineering, process engineering, materials engineering, business informatics, and industrial engineering. A lot of prog programs, as you see. <coughs> then, we have centers of competence, energy research center, steel technologies, information engineering, simulation technologies, environmental technology and the material science under development and it will be open this year. Therefore, we have a lot of construction actually in Cluster and this means a lot of work for us and for me. <coughs> NTH, it means Niedersächsische Technische Hochschule, Niedersachsen, means Lower Saxony the region in northern Germany. <coughs> this is an alliance of three University of Technology and one of this is Kloster, the other is Braunschweig <coughs> founded and Hanover founded in 2009 <coughs> utilizing the synergies in the areas of engineering, architecture, informatics, natural science and mathematics. NTH is one of the largest centers of academic research and education among German universities. But don't confuse this. Kloster is one university, Hanover, and Braunschweig are other universities. It's not only one university, it's an alliance between the three universities. We have a lot of partners in industry, for example, ThyssenKrupp, there's one Cameron, 4V, I think everyone knows 4V, Volkswagen, another example, Siemens, well known in the world, RBM, RWE and Lufthansa. <coughs> well, this is again Lower Saxony, the region, this is Hanover, this is Kloster and Goslar, it's the nearest larger city in Kloster, very beautiful place, <coughs> nice to see it, you should visit it. Here is Braunschweig and the University of Hanover, the Leibniz University. And this is Göttingen, but Göttingen, the University of Göttingen is not a member of this alliance, this has its reason. This is not a technical university, it's a university in Göttingen. <coughs> Internationality, Klostar University is well known in the whole world for its internationality. 
around 150 cooperations with universities and research facilities worldwide, 33 international percent international students. I think Clausdal is the largest Chinese university outside China. <laughs> I have the impression. <laughs> Number two in terms of incoming students among all German university within the EASTA program. DAAD, Deutsche Akademische Austauschdienst, interchange programs from Germany. <coughs> Quality labor program, engineering internships with Leibniz University, Hannover and Purdue universities, University in the United States. International business semester and uh, global engineering semester launch from this year. Do you see international students from all of the world? Also from China, as you may have noticed here, this one guy. I think he is from China. What do you think? <laughs> responsible, the center, International Center Klaus is responsible for international relations and activities together with the presidential board. Incoming and outgoing students and faculty, incoming administrative staff, international staff exchange week, and a language center where you can study German and other language also. For example, Spanish, Castellano. But, but I think it's not for an interest for the most of it, but for the Germans, uh, pronounced interest in studying Spanish. Responsibilities of the ICZ, international admission, international marketing, and recruitment, only two examples, it's enough. And then language, language center, I remarked it before, and wide range of activities, for example, at the Hannover Messe, Hannover, Hannover Fair, and Berlin, Munich, a lot of seminars, intercultural training, and presentation related to the German history. IASTA, International Association for the Exchange of Students for Technical Experience. I think you know this organization. German Secretary General is alumni of Klausdahl. Theo Klausdahl ranks number two in terms of incoming trainees among all German university between 50 and uh, between 40 and 50 incomers each summer. Internships are paid. This is interesting for the students, I think. <coughs> Numerous Yaste alumni decide to continue their studies in Klausthal. This is good for Klausthal and I hope good for the students and for the countries where they come from. More incoming than outgoing students. These are our dual degree programs with Krakow and Bologna, Valencia, I think you know, Valencia, Oviedo, Ostrava, and material science and engineering in Cairo, Metz, it's in France, geo-environmental with China, chemical engineering, Krakow, Gliwice, and environmental protection technology, also in Polonia and in Gliwice, I think it's also <coughs> in Polonia. Process engineering in Krakow, and I can't read. I, ca I don't know the right pron pronunciation for, I think it's Gliwice in Polonia, but I'm not convinced of it. <coughs> Testimonials, most interesting for you, I think, this lady from Spain, Nerera Bizarro. I came to Klausdahl for the first time as an Yasta intern. I liked the university too much that I decided to return to Klausdahl to finish my bachelor degree here. Here means there in Klausdahl. <coughs> Alumnus, the first one. I think you know him, huh? Oh, did he change his job? I'm, I don't know. It's actually. <laughs> Van Gang, <laughs> Professor Van Gang, Minister of Science and Technology in China. China. Is it actual or not? Is it your minister? Yes, minister? 
<laughs> Try to find it out and tell it to me. <laughs> the next one, Professor Schulz from Trüssen Kup, uh, very well known, and uh, Mr. Grossmann, uh, also in Germany, is well known, and Dr. Ink Müller Wiesner from the EADS, European Agency for Space, <coughs> Dr. Ink Ulrich Köhler, member of the managing board in uh, Thyssen Krupp. <coughs> Klaus Tal is situated in the middle of the World Heritage. This one, as you see here, 70 small lakes. They were constructed or they were made for production energy for the mines. In, I think it's 500 years ago that this was started. <coughs> This is a picture of Goslar, it's near Klausal, 25 kilometers, World Heritage, the historical core of the city, it's part of the World Heritage, very interesting city, city, I must say, it is worth to travel to this city. And this is like in a fairy tale, this is the center of Goslar in winter, at Christmas, the market, it's very beautiful, come to Goslar to see it. <laughs> because I live there. <laughs> yeah, some houses in Kloster, not all, I, I, I said it before, I think, not all the, the, the houses are colored like this one, but it's very beautiful, I think. <coughs> this is technolo technology, I think it is better, it would be better if I say that uh, the complete city is the university, you see on this picture only some buildings. This is the main building and it's not so important for the technical studies. We have other areas where modern buildings are constructed, are being constructed actually for more students. And these are the apartments for the students. They can live there. I think it's cheap to live there and very beautiful. <coughs> Student life, the travel to Berlin. I think you know this Brandenburger Tor in Berlin. Oh yeah, what does it mean, student life? Not only to eat, but it's important also. <coughs> we see international students. On this picture, I don't see someone from China. <laughs> she, perhaps. <laughs> and these are all the students. Yes, yeah, sports, a lot of possibilities in winter. Skiing, for example, you see it here, we have a lot of snow there. A lot of lakes, I uh, emphasize it before, you can sail on the sails. There's one on the small rivers, but very wild rivers, canoeing and so on. Yes, I hope it's a short impression for you. I think it's a good impression and it would be my it would be nice to see you in close time. Thank you very much. This is the first impression. A short moment will come the next one. Right now or okay. Yes, this is the institute where I work, the Institute for Material and Science. These are the more modern buildings. And this is mine building. It's not mine, but I work here, <laughs> as you may imagine. <coughs> this is our institute for professors and 15 research assistant, technician, visiting, lecturers, trainees, and a lot of student workers, more than five, so not actual. <coughs> our facilities in the labs, we have a spectroscopy, I will tell you more shortly, microscopy, <coughs> Heat treatment, materialography, manufacturing processes can be performed, simulated, mechanical surface treatments and diffractometry, X-ray diffractometry, then our corrosion lab and a lot of things for material testing. Spectroscopy for the examination of different alloys for the examination of the composition of the alloys. We have two spectroscopes for this job. <coughs> this is one of our manufacturing 
machines, as a CNC, lathes and milling machines, only for the preparation for the machining of samples. We have a lot of samples, therefore we, not, uh, we need on machines for yeah. <coughs> machining these samples, conventional lathes and milling machines, additionally. Materiography and optical microscopy. I think you know this microscope, therefore I don't have to explain a lot of it. <coughs> this is more interesting, I think. A transmission electron microscope, TEM. You can investigate dislocations, structures. I told yesterday about dislocations. You can see this type of dislocations with this microscope. Precipitation structures are very important to examine these structures because these are the main topics, one of the main topics in our institute and the nanograin structures. This is an example for fine coherent precipitates. This, were, uh, this is done for increase the hardness, the strength of the material there's an intermetallic phase, titanium-3, aluminum, very small particles. These are scale and micrometer. Thermomechanical processing. This is a horizontal extrusion press, the same presses you would find in the industry. It's not special press for universal application, you could earn money with this press because not everyone has it, but a lot of people would like to have it. Yes, for example, we can perform experiments for a grain, for performing, for realizing a grain refinement. This shows this example a magnesium alloy, AZ80, AZD, AZ is a hardenable magnesium alloy that contains 8% aluminum and 0.5% zinc. You see how you can change the microstructure by means of the extruding process on the left side, the S cast situation. On the left side, the microstructure after the extrusion processes. The extrusion processes give rise to a pronounced grain refinement. And, you know, normally the fine grain structures are the desired structures for the application because they have better performances. And the most things, there's one exception, but I don't want to talk about this, not right now. <coughs> this is, these are Wöhler cur curves for studying the fatigue performance of the material. And uh, what is shown in this Wöhler curves, the dependence of the extrusion temperature, oh, no, I would say it with other words, the dependence of the fatigue performance on the extruding temperature. The larger the temperature, the worse the fatigue performance. Extruding by 350 degrees means that uh, fatigue performance decreases compared to an extrusion process at 200 Celsius degrees. The reason is the grain grows by means of the higher temperatures. <coughs> For the thermic mechanical processing, a rolling mill and a swaging machine. I don't know whether you know what a swaging process is. One moment. Swaging machines, I don't want to explain every machine that we have, but this slide shows you how it works, the swaging process. The feed motion of the bar, this direction, and here you see rotating hammer, hammers, which deform the structure in a defined way. This gives rise to better mechanical properties. For example, better fatigue performance, 
better yield strength as depend on the material. <coughs> Here we have an a pressing example. Mm. I translated these words this morning, but I don't know why well, it didn't work. This is the as delivered state of the material, very large range, see the scale, 50 micrometers, and after the swaging process, pronounced fine grained structure with excellent mechanical properties, electro polished and etched. And this means after swaging. This is the deforming degree. <coughs> yeah, I translate this slide. Now I know what I did. On the left side, again, the as delivered state, and on the right side, after swaging, grain refinement, as before. And this diagram shows the yield strength versus the deformation degree. And you see that the yield strength increases with increasing deformation degree. High cycle fatigue performance increased by the swaging process. You know there is a relationship between yield stress and the fatigue performance. And you can see it on this diagram. After the swaging, uh, after the swaging, the fatigue performance is increased compared to the not swaged as delivered state of the material. <coughs> In this case, we see a microstructure refinement of the meta stable beta titanium alloy LCB due to swaging. The same as before, this is the deliberate state, and on the right side, the grain, the pronounced grain refinement after the swaging process. <coughs> this table shows the influence on the yield strength and the, the UTS by means of grain refinement by means of the swaging process. and the fatigue performance. I must apologize for the quality of the slide, but in this case it's not. I think it comes from the different versions. Fatigue performance, the experiments were done by or with R equals minus one. This is swage and annealed, and this is only and yield, and you see the same effect that we saw before the increase of the fatigue performance, the per fatigue properties. There's another interesting method to deform the material. This is ECAP, the equi-channel angular pressing. You can realize pronounced deformation degrees, the sample is pressed into this tool and is deformed around this angle, 90 degree, and then the sample is turned 90 degree and the same procedure as before. You can do it four times, you can do it eight times, and this gives rise to uh, special, special def deformation degrees, dislocation densities, and so on in the microstructure. Some properties are better compared uh, to the properties that were produced by means of other deformation processes. But, for example, uh, <coughs> introduced residual stresses are not very stable. We could prove it by means of uh, thermal processes, heat treatment. It's not, not always the best structure, it depends, and it's not very useful for the industry this method. Thermodynamical processing. Here you see the effect of ECAP. <coughs> grain size distribution related to the grain size distribution. And 
This is a high pressure torsion machine for performing experiments under high pressures. Additional torsion, rotation in the sample. And this is a mechanical surface treatment by means of short peening. I explained to you yesterday that short peening is a very useful method to introduce residual stresses in the surface near structure for increasing, for example, the fatigue performances or, or for protecting against stress corrosion cracking. <coughs> we have some, uh, in, in the sum five of these apparatus for performing these experiments. Another possibility to do or to realize surface near deformation is <coughs> the ball burnishing or the roller burnishing. It's the same principle, but uh, you need special geometries of the samples. By performing shot peening, performing shot peening is easier because it is un independent of the geometry of the samples of the material. This is the ball burnishing, and you may have noticed that you need a special geometry, a circle geometry in the sample, otherwise it wouldn't be possible to perform ball burnishing or it would be more difficult to do it. Yeah, this slide shows the micro hardness depth. Hardness against the penetration depth and what we see is that what we expected on the outer surface, this is the outer surface, we have <coughs> the highest hardness and if you go into the materials after this process you will find it decreases and here is the end of the effect of the cold forming of the surface. <coughs> yes, another Wöhler curve. We see the effect of ball burnishing related to the fatigue performance of a sample. This experiments on these curves were, were performed with a sample without ball burnished surface. EP means electro-polished. This is done for having a defined surface, the surface without micro cracks. Every kind of micro cracks would influence the result of this experiment. Then here you see that the fatigue performance increases by means of the cold firming of the locally defined cold firming process in the surface near areas. <coughs> yeah, the next our scanning electron microscope. Yesterday you saw some photos. Fracture surface analysis after setting creep quasi static cyclic or dynamic loading for the failure analysis for seeing the fracture surfaces and so on. Defractometry, we can measure residual stresses, desired, defined residual stresses, or other types of residual stresses, but that's, that's not the end of the job. We can use this diffractometer also for the phase analysis of the structure. After heat treatments, it's very interesting to do it to do it because you can see what phases were formated during the heat treatment. Residual stress measurements are also possible with the incremental hole drilling method. This is a hole driller and I think you know this hole driller from your visit at the dentist. It's the same. It's really the same. <coughs> a 
residual stress depth profiles of the shot peening. This diagram shows how you could influence the stress depth profile by means of shot peening. This was done with different alloys. The first one, no, the first two are, in this case, this is a magnesium alloy. This is uh, acid 80, I presented before, and this is an aluminum alloy of the 6000 series. Materials testing, the creep lab for creep experiments on the constant load, dependent on the temperature. And these are the machines for the fatigue testing experiments, rotating beam machines, and we have three flat bending machines additional. <coughs> Actual testing, fatigue testing, we have three resonance testers, this vacuum, high temperature, and corrosion chamber. Therefore, we can study the fatigue behavior under atmospheric condition and vacuum. And as you may may think that the inf atmospheric conditions have an influence related to the fatigue performance of the samples because the surface is corroding. <coughs> this is actual fatigue testing with the vacuum chamber. Here you see the vacuum chamber. Without You can perform your experiments without the influence of the atmosphere. <coughs> These are several hydraulic testers. Yeah, and this is our potential start. I told you yesterday, or the day before yesterday, about potential static measurements. Today it's very small, not larger than a laptop. You see, this is the measure cell. But we have other things, for example, a salt spray camera, camera for studying the performance of different metals, for example, austenitic steels, stainless steels under chloride atmospheric conditions. Our research activities, especially the light metals used in airplanes, titanium alloys, aluminum alloys, magnesium, copper alloys, steels, and ductile iron. And what we are studying, especially the microstructure, <coughs> property, relationships, the thermal, mechanical treatments, severe plastic deformation for, for the formation of, for generating a very fine structured material. <coughs> mechanical surface treatments, you saw it before, and the fatigue performance and creep behavior, and especially the corrosion behavior of the metals. What happened now? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's, I think, for the first time. The first presentation. What will we do now, the next? <laughs> no, I think it, it's, uh, yeah. it's like uh, Okay. We are, we are, we then thank you very much. Yeah, we have time for some questions. Ah, yeah. Some discussions, whatever. When will you come to Klaus start to study there? <laughs> this is my first question. <laughs> we are looking for students. Also from Europe, from China, yes, and from Europe. <laughs> you are looking for a question? Yes, we are looking for students because. And the income is 650 Yeah, it, it depends. Income, it depends on the support. It's support for the students. But I'm not very familiar with these programs, but there are a possibility to support the students, I know it. For, for that, you have to contact the International Center in Kloster, they can help you. You will find it, I can give you the contact address and then you can ask them. There are people that speak, uh, who speak Spanish, I must say. I think the director of the institute, the madam, speaks English Spanish, therefore you don't have to speak English or German or whatever. They like it to speak Spanish there. Some more question? Yeah, I, I, 
There is not any question. I'd like to ask you about the about the ECAP mm -hmm. uh, that you were presenting yes. the, the facility because I think this is very interesting. The, can you comment something on the results that you obtained? On yeah. The materials? Yeah. Uh, I must say we are not very convinced of this method. You can produce some interesting structures because you have very high strange deformation degrees but as I, I said before these structures are not al always I must say not always very stable compared to other experiments. The swaging process has its advantages compared to the Eker process and the Eker process <laughs> has some other disadvantages as a tool. We produced a tool for 3,000 euros uh, last month and in the first experiment it was broken because the forces are very strong and it's very difficult and I think it's very dangerous to perform, uh, dangerous for the c related to the coast uh, to perform this experiment. And I, I don't see an application, I know an application, but uh, I'm sure I can talk about it because we have a contract with the industry. But uh, it's only interesting for special parts of the industry. It's not uh, for the common use, I would say. It has to do with military with application. <coughs> but for cars or for airplanes, I, I, I don't see many applications right now. I don't know whether that's the answer to your question, but... No, no, yeah, no, that's uh, interesting, because actually yeah. one of the problems with this ECAP mm -hmm. processing is uh, 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 it's very difficult to implement. It's, yeah, it's, it's very that's small, true. it's very yeah, small. I, I think there's no way for upgrading yeah. the mechanism, the production process. Therefore, uh, I don't uh, see application. Not yet, perhaps, in the future, I don't know. Okay. But we have other processes, uh, swaging, for example. <coughs> Any other question? Did you say, did you say that uh, you are able to get some money with the extrusion press? Uh, no, it's forbidden for us to earn money, ah, to well. make money with this press. But <laughs> I think some people would be interesting that we would do it. But we can do it. We can only, only uh, perform experiments for the science, nothing more. No, yeah, uh, no, because we had, uh, we had a similar equipment. We, we, in say, Please uh, yeah. show me the way to make money. With <laughs> 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 well, thank you very much. It would be a good idea, but it, it doesn't work. It's not no. possible. No, it's, it, we can get some uh, money, especially in, the, in this we moment. Can, we can perform and we do it for the industry experiments, but no production is possible. Mm -hmm. No production. We have another institute where we can uh, work for the market, the co-institute of our institute, Cluster Material Consulting, but this is another thing. This is Can, not you assorted. cannot work for, for companies? Yes, uh, in a restricted way. We can't produce. We can only perform scientific experiments and test new materials. But for other work, we have yeah, um, another uh, institute, uh, 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 but research, it's research, private, no, organized. Uh, yes. You can mm. do a, a project mm. with people from yeah. industry, but mm. you cannot do mm. normal no, tests. No, 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 that can't be there. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much to you.